My name is Adam Greenfield. I am a writer and urbanist uh, and currently working on a book called Radical Technologies, the Design of Everyday Life. I think I'm um, profiting from, at least in English, the inherent ambiguity of the word radical. It could mean politically radical, but it also could mean cutting to the core of something, uh, cutting to the root of something. And I think the technologies that I'm trying to examine and understand in the book uh, are the ones which are doing most to condition uh, fundamentally condition our everyday life, con condition our ability to relate to one another, condition the, the sorts of selves that we become and feel ourselves to be, and the ways in which as selves we organize ourselves in, in collectivities and groups. Um, so these are technologies like automation, like the blockchain, like virtual reality, uh, like digital fabrication. And I'm, I'm not necessarily a proponent of any of them. I'm, I'm looking at them uh, neutrally verging on skeptically. I'm assessing of them uh, what sorts of limitations do they present us with and what sorts of possibilities do they open up for us. And so far I find that the record is decidedly mixed and verging on quite a bit scary actually. I, I don't see, uh, the, the more I understand each of these technologies, the, the more deeply I get involved with them. Um, the more that I work with them and I understand their grain, their texture, and their promise, uh, the less I feel that they have anything to offer that could possibly do better than the experience we've been discussing today, which is the experience of participating in a General Assembly. Ultimately, that technology, the old technology, of being physically in one another's presence, forced to reckon with one another as, as unique individuals, forced to recognize with the subjectivity of another, and to, and to grant the validity of their perspective on the world and to understand that, that we might not necessarily be able to reach agreement on all matters and yet we need to arrive at some kind of mode that allows us to go on living together. This, that is a much more powerful technology and ultimately I think a much more fruitful one than the ones which we spend so much of our time, energy and attention focusing on. You know, I, I can only speak to my own experience, but my own experience in the very shallow ways relatively shallow ways in which I've brushed up against Occupy, brushed up against the, the umbrella uprising in Hong Kong, um, brushed up against other aspects of the movement of the squares. It calls forth from us the most extraordinary emotional presence. We're present with one another. We're authentic to one another. We're available to one another. And, it, you know, the entire history of post-structuralist theory teaches us to beware of meta-narratives. It teaches us to beware of claims of authenticity, claims of organicity, claims of originality. Um, and, and yet, for all of that being my intellectual training, um, I have to compare the, the, the visceral experience to being in uh, the instantaneous infrastructure of an Occupy encampment or an Umbrella Movement encampment with what I experience in the rest of my everyday life. And if you're going to make that direct comparison, only one of those two experiences makes me feel like an agent of history, <laughs> makes me feel like a subject um, with, uh, with power and with real agency as part of uh, an extraordinary moment in, in time. Um, so those are the technologies that I choose to invest in, ultimately, if I may use that language are the technologies of, of immediate, authentic, collective action. I understand that it's not, you know, a, a, um, it's not a panacea, right? It doesn't solve every problem. Uh, we've spoken today about how, you know, the General Assembly as a decision-making tool may not be efficient. But as my friend and, and guide, uh, Stavros Davrides, has always taught me, um, n efficiency is a neoliberal virtue. Efficiency is not necessarily a popular virtue. And I think that when you take the time to invest in fully being present with what is being said and what is being felt and what is being expressed, that takes you to a different place inside and collectively than you can hope to if you're guided by the values of efficiency and, and by the values of evidence-based decision-making or uh, even of, of good or of wise decision-making.